Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we're going to be doing is checking out what is easily one of my top favorite Linux distributions, and that is Fedora. Specifically, the Fedora version 35 beta, I think it's the uh, 1.2 beta version. And we're going to be taking a closer look at GNOME 41. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we did a video going over GNOME 41, but that was the uh, an earlier version through GNOME OS, so not everything was working perfectly fine. But in this case, GNOME 41 has been released, so we should be able to get the full experience. And like always, this is going to be done on hardware. No, this is not Fedora. This is a zero Linux. It was the last uh, distribution I checked out on actual hardware. If you're interested, you could check out that video. But let's go ahead and give our system a reboot. All right, we're going to change to our new Fedora disk. Exit, save and reset. Yes, and jump into this live Fedora environment. All right, here we go. Let's just go ahead and start the, uh, this is the Workstation Live 35 beta. And here we go. One of my favorite things is when distributions actually get their logo on this uh, splash screen that go with the BIOS. I just think that's really cool. And here we are. So we have the options to install and try. Now I'm just going to jump straight into the installation process and we're going to check everything out after the install. Uh, one of the cool things about Fedora is the actual installer isn't like Calamaris, is it, it's not a typical Ubuntu installer. It's a little bit different and if you've never experienced or been in the actual Fedora installer, it may be kind of odd to you. So I probably shouldn't have pulled that down. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's maximize that. <laughs> So going through here, I'm just going to go ahead and select all my languages and all that. Uh, this is an unstable pre-release software. It gives us a little warning. I want to proceed. Let's check this out. And here, this is where it's kind of different. Instead of just walking you through a step-by-step -step thing, you have to go in and do all this. Uh, keyboard's already set, but if you want to, you go ahead, uh, select your proper keyboard layout, hit done. From there, you could do your time and date. I am not in Chicago time. I'm going to go Los Angeles time. And no, I'm not in Los Angeles. I'm nowhere near Los Angeles, thankfully. So let's go done. Here, we're just going to do an automatic installation of the entire drive that we have here on our system. But you have a whole bunch of options. You could do custom partitioning. You can encrypt your data. A whole bunch of stuff. I'm not going to do any of that. Let's just go next. Since we already have an installation here, we're, we're going to need to reclaim some space. So let's go ahead and open that up. And for this, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of both of these. So let's delete that. Let's delete that. Or I could, could have just hit delete all. And then uh, reclaim space. There we go. So now it's checking everything to make sure what I did is going to work. Automatic partitioning. Good to go. Then we could go ahead and begin the installation. And uh, this takes a little bit. Out of all the installations, uh, Fedora does seem to take a little bit longer than like your typical Ubuntu install, for example. Um, I think OpenSUSE, OpenSUSE is the one that has taken the longest for me, no matter what hardware I have it on. And just like that, our installation is complete. So we're just going to hit finish installation here. And then let's go ahead and reboot our computer. So let's restart, restart our system. And we are booting on in. There we go. We have the welcome to Fedora 35. Awesome. So let's go ahead and just start our setup and run through this real quick. I have a whole bunch of Wi-Fi networks here, but uh, I do have a wired connection. So we're going to go ahead and skip that for now. Uh, location services, problem, re problem reporting. I have no issue with any of those third party repositories. So I wonder if this enables like RPM fusion and all that, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and enable that and see if it does and connect your online accounts. So our options are Google, Nextcloud and Microsoft. That's not too bad. Let's skip that for now. Create my actual profile here. So let's give myself my name and then go to next here. Let's set up a super strong, super secure password and hit next. <laughs> uh, and all done. That's it. So let's go ahead and start using Fedora Linux. Doesn't really give us any other information about the system. Um, oh, here we go. This is the tour. So let's go ahead and start our tour. And so let's learn about the key features of Fedora Linux 35. This is the uh, workstation pre-release. So next, get an overview. Press the super key to go ahead and get that overview. Uh, let's go next. Just type to search. So if I start typing something in the uh, shell, it's going to go ahead and start searching it. Basic GNOME stuff. Next, keep on top of all your workspaces. Uh, we have some swipe control, which I'm not going to be able to demo because this is a mouse and have a nice day done. 
So this right here is Fedora 35. First things first, let's go ahead and open up the software center. Because this is the one thing that I was not able to check out last time, and this is one of the big things they changed in this version of GNOME. So let's browse software, wait for this all to download. And this took a really long time on Ubuntu last time we looked at it, so hopefully it, it actually uh, gets everything. And here we go, this is the new and improved, uh, completely redesigned software center. So let's go ahead and check some of this out. We see we have a big uh, slider here to see some featured applications. We have some categories here, so create, develop, socialize, and then we have the editor's choice applications. Uh, let's go ahead and open up something. So let's say we wanted a torrent client. So let's go grab transmission. Here, transmission gives us our ratings. If I do show more, it gives us a really nice little rundown of what this application actually is. Uh, we can see the download size, so it's just under a megabyte. They are ruling it as safe. I hear a lot of the times if it's not a flat pack, that might not, so, well, it might say it's not safe. So that's something to watch out for. Desktop only, one thing if you played around with the uh, Pine phone, and I believe it's the uh, Posh interface, uh, GNOME is becoming more and more mobile friendly. So you can see if I shrink that down, if this is on a phone, that would look pretty good. So let's go ahead and slide that back out. We have our actual ratings here, so you can read those. Community build, get involved, links to the website. We have our version histories right here. So let's close this out. And let's say we actually want to get this. So we just hit install. Uh, preparing, installing, and done. So it didn't ask me for my password or anything, so that's a little interesting. Uh, let's go back. Let's go to updates. We have some updates on our system, and it looks like we have quite a bit. So it's actually a good thing I opened this uh, updates up before we got too involved. Looks like we have some major things, such as uh, going from some of the 41 release candidates to the actual 41 version. Uh, GNOME fonts is going from 40 to 41, so some big updates here in our first little look. So let's, let's go ahead and grab this. Uh, we're going to restart and install, so I'll be right back. And th this is a common thing here in Fedora, actually making you restart your system and watch a progress bar and not being able to do anything while it's running updates. Um, I'm not necessarily a fan of this. I like a, like an Arch or even any Debian-based system. You can just see the terminal working in the background and you, you can continue working. Granted, you will have to restart for some major updates, but when I ran Fedora, I did this a lot more than I would have liked to. Now, this has taken some time, so hopefully it's going to be wrapping up here. And while it does that, I'm going to tell you about some of the uh, Fedora-specific updates. One of the things was that third-party support. I'm going to be looking more into that in just a sec. But additionally, Pulse Audio was replaced by Pipewire, so that's a change It's going to be shipping with the 5.14 kernel. And it looks like here for the Fedora Cloud, they're going to be using uh, ButterFS the file system as the default. And it looks like they have DNS over TLS support, so this is going to uh, encrypt your DNS requests to prevent your IPS from spying on you. So with that said, we are back in here. We have some important things that were installed, so it's gonna allow us to go ahead and review the things that we just updated. A lot of stuff went from release candidate to official version, because they are really wrapping up when it comes to the GNOME 41 stuff, as this version of Fedora is being set to launch. Now one thing I'm just going to do real quick, let's go ahead and throw open a terminal and run a NeoFetch. It is probably not installed, but one of the beautiful things about Fedora is it suggests it if you would like to install it. So let's go ahead and proceed with the changes. Uh, one thing, I, if you do like Fedora or if you plan on installing it, I recommend you check out my uh, five things to do after you install Fedora video because one of the little tricks in that video is putting Y as the default when it comes to asking you if you want to proceed with installations and things like that. So there we go, it went ahead and pulled up NeoFetch for us and you can see the uh, 5.13 kernel we just talked about. It doesn't ship, or at least NeoFetch is not saying that it's shipping with any flat packs, which is weird. Uh, we have Bash, we are running GNOME 41. Uh, one thing I wanted to check out is that third party support. So I'm just gonna do a quick test. Let's do a sudo DNF install and let's just say OBS studio that's something you definitely have to uh, add through RPM fusion and there was no match so I was getting getting a little bit hopeful there but with that said let's move on to our settings because there's some changes in here within gnome 40 that are pretty awesome if I go over here under multitasking you can see some new options we have the hot corner 
So touch the top left to go to that activities. You can actually disable that through here. If you are like me and I have a monitor right here, so I always accidentally hit that activities, uh, you can just completely disable that if you would like to. And now we have the ability to enable and disable this feature, so actually dragging your windows side to side. I can go ahead and disable that through here and then it's not going to do anything. Additionally down here we have the uh, dynamic workspaces and fixed number. So it will create workspaces as you open windows and send them to other workspaces or you can set a specific amount to always be running. And right here this is nice we have the workspace on display main display only or to display the workspaces on all of the displays. And then when it comes to application switching, we have an option here to include from all workspaces or to include from the current workspace only. Now one thing that's not showing up for me, no surprise, is the new cellular panel. That is a new thing if you are on a device that actually supports it. But one thing that should show up is an option to actually disable all the animations. So you can see that when I go to my workspaces, there's a little animation. If I go over to accessibility here, you have the option to disable those animations. So now when I hit the button, you can see it doesn't have that smooth effect anymore. For now, I'm gonna enable it. Another thing, if you go mouse and touchpad, and if we go up to test your settings here, you have some uh, nice artwork. So uh, that's just something kind of cool they added and you can uh, test your primary, all your clicks and everything. Next up, if we head over here and actually go to this little menu, we have some power settings that are built into this. So right here where it says balanced, that's our current power setting. And you can see we have power saver or you can go to your power settings through here. Uh, if you're on a laptop and you're running on battery power, when it gets low, it will automatically switch over to power saver. But alternatively, we could go over to the power settings and switch everything here and actually set up your power saving options. So when it does go to power saving or when you set it to this power saver mode, you can tell it specifically what it needs to do. Now, I'm not really gonna dive into calendars. That's another update is they're accepting uh, ICS files. So it's gonna be much easier for people who actually use those calendar applications to import events, data, and things like that. But one thing I'm interested in is the new connections application. It's uh, built off of the same bo uh, UI as boxes, but what connections is going to allow you to do is remote into various uh, virtual machines, servers, computers, whatever you may be wanting to use. So if we move this over here, we could go ahead and run through what it actually is. So we use other desktops remotely. We could go next, connect to different operating systems. One thing that's cool that was noted is the uh, artwork for Mac and Windows within Fedora is very nice. Uh, if we go next, we have the information to enable remote uh, desktops before connecting. If we go next, it says, we, ho we hope you enjoy it. And from here, you go ahead and add connections. This can be done through RDP or VNC, whatever your personal preferences are. And like I said, it's built off of GNOME boxes, so it's gonna have a lot of the same UI elements and really simplistic, easy to use software. Uh, some other things, I believe Nautilus has gotten updates so you can password protect zip files. And if you uh, go into your trash bin, for example, if you actually have things in there, it will display uh, some settings, tell you how, like how many files, how long it's been in there, just some helpful information. Maps application has gotten some uh, bug improvements and fixes. So this is their actual maps application. If we go and zoom in here, we'll zoom into uh, my little hometown in Washington, north of Battleground. So let's go check it out. It's way the heck in the middle of nowhere. I think it's right here. Yeah, Yakult, Washington. So you can see how responsive it is, how quickly everything loads. The actual UI and everything is very, very nice. And it's very accurate and they have very good, uh, so if I just search up something like Eastern Washington University, travel to it, you can see how quickly it takes us in, zooms us in. It, it, it's, it's a fantastic piece of software. And one thing you probably noticed while I've just been flipping through all this is how incredibly just speedy and snappy everything is. There's been some uh, performance improvements overall. Uh, if I go over here to system resources, you can see we are using almost uh, uh, first couple cores. It used a little bit when it opened up, but we're using around one to 5%. Our actual memory utilization is 1.6 gigabytes, which is a little bit on the higher side. But if you looked at a NeoFetch earlier, I think it was at like 1.2. I've been opening things and I'm playing around a little bit, so it's not too bad for a GNOME desktop. 
Quickly skimming over some of the applications here, specifically on Fedora, we have all the GNOME stuff. So we have weather, clocks, maps, photos, videos. Uh, we have all of our utilities. There's an actual update to disks, which allows you to create uh, encrypted partitions using LUKS2. And they went ahead and changed some icons around. Overall, they made it just a little bit cleaner. You probably won't notice too much, but there, there are some very small changes throughout that piece of software. So other than that, GNOME, well, Fedora is just probably one of the best things that you could run if you like GNOME. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Honestly, if I didn't need those uh, AMD Pro drivers from the AUR, Fedora is definitely the Linux distribution I would probably be on. But for now, I'm gonna have to stick with Endeavor OS. Granted, I, I might change my mind. Who knows, who knows? If I do change my mind, you guys are gonna be the first people to know about it. Uh, with all that said, I would like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Phil Mac, Kyle, and Timo Anthony, and all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. Thank you all so much for your support. Uh, if you are interested in trying this out today, the official version is not out quite yet, but you could download the beta version. Go ahead, try it out, virtual machine hardware, whatever you want to do. The download links will be down below. With everything said, I hope you have a beautiful day. I know I did. It's nighttime now. It's getting there. It's getting dark. My day was good. I hope yours is too, or is going to be. Uh, goodbye.